discussion with my brothers and my sisters in Islam. And the topic as it read on a flyer was marriage in Islam and how it benefits the community. And no doubt that's an important topic, how marriage benefits the community or benefits society as a whole in reality by protecting people from falling into impermissible matters. Likewise, by allowing the Muslims to have children, thus populating the earth with people who will be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's an important aspect of marriage, to have children so that the earth is populated with people and right, righteous people who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if we don't seek to populate the earth with people who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then what will the earth be populated with? That's how it reads on the flyer. Marriage and Islam and how it benefits the community. So we want the community to benefit. However, without a shadow of a doubt, I believe that we all want to benefit before the community benefits. I believe that we all want to benefit from our own marriages. I believe that we want to be in our homes in a peaceful state, in a calm state, enjoying our spouses, enjoying our children, enjoying the moment, for lack of better words. So no doubt marriage benefits the community, but again, we want to benefit from our marriages first and foremost within the confines of our own houses. And there's two hadith that we want to discuss today, inshallah ta'ala, in brief, because no doubt our sisters, they want to socialize, so we'll try to give them a chance to socialize and to build some sisterhood. So we'll discuss in brief, inshallah ta'ala, a couple of hadith. Two hadith. That inshallah, if a person or couples implement these two hadith, then no doubt they should find an environment of tranquility within the confines of their home, along with other things. The two, two hadith that would be helpful in that affair. Not saying that these two hadith, if, you know, the only two hadith and happiness is going to be in a home because of these two hadith, but they're a step. Inshallah ta'ala. In that first hadith, or just to rehash, we'll say two topics before we discuss the hadith, two affairs that will make the home happy before we discuss the hadith. That first affair is that the spouses that they build a firm trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first affair, and the hadith that discusses that topic. That both spouses, they have embedded in them the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, no doubt that goes back to the proper aqidah. That goes back to the proper creed. That goes back to tawheed. That couples, they have to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not put their trust in other things. So if the couple, the husband and the wife, they find or both of those spouses, their hearts are full of tawakkul or trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then no doubt that's going to be a source of happiness in the home. And again, if a person ponders that goes back to the correct aqidah, nothing's going to be nothing's going to get fixed and rectified unless a person rectifies their creed. There's no way around that. No way around it. A person has to study tawheed. A person has to be busy with tawheed. A person has to learn what, what shirk is and polytheism is. A person has to learn that there's no way around it. So that first aspect is that both couples, they, they have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That second affair that can help bring happiness to the home so a couple can benefit from their marriage is filling the house with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having a household where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly mentioned. That's, that's, that's the environment of the house that we're going to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is going to be a house where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped and remembered all the time. In opposition to where the household is full, full of things that are haram. How is the household going to be peaceful if that's the case? Or impermissible things. How is the household going to be peaceful? How are the spouses going to benefit from one another and enjoy one another? And reap the fruits of, of marriage. So those are the two affairs. Both spouses trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And both spouses being on the same page. 
you know, spouses or people when they get married, they say, you know, I want someone that's on the same page as me. I want someone that's into the same things as me. The number one thing, the, the, the first page that both people need to be on is that we're going to be a family or a couple that remembers Allah who's a pen with the Allah much. So the first hadith as it relates to both people or both spouses. Trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a hadith in Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqab. That Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the following. Qala, or he said, law annakum tawakkaluna ala Allahi haqqa tawakkulihi la razaqakum kama yarzuku al-tayr. تغضوا خصاما وتروحوا بطانا عمر رضي الله عنه He said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said if one of you were to truly rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala person were to truly rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will provide for you like a bird. That he will provide for you like a bird. What about this bird? Like a bird that leaves out of its nest with an empty stomach. In the morning, this particular bird, it leaves out of the nest with an empty stomach. No doubt, seeking provisions. And that bird, it comes back to its nest at the end of his day with a full stomach. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for us if we truly relied upon him. That we go out to seek provisions and we go out to attain the things that we want from this world having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide them for you. But as if a person has trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sheikh Abdul Musa hafizahullah ta'ala, he explains this hadith and he mentions, هذا الحديث أصل في توقع على الله مع الأخذ الأسباب المشروعة. And this particular hadith, it teaches us to have trust and reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta along with carrying out the means because both have to go together. Both have to go together. That we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but likewise we go about, we, we carry out the means. We do the things necessary in order to achieve the goals that we have. And we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he'll provide for us and help us attain the things that we want. And a person carrying out the means or doing what they need to do, it doesn't contradict the person relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or rather, that's how it's supposed to be. We're not, that's how it's supposed to be. We're not a group of people who sit back and do nothing and say that we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather we set out and we and we do the we, we, we set out to do the means and do the actions that are going to help us attain that goal. And no doubt that goes first and foremost for, for us as men. That goes first and foremost for us as men. That is upon us. To trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but likewise to be from those who set out in the, in, in the earth and toil and try to provide for our families. As we see in this particular hadith, that that bird it didn't just stay in the nest. Or rather, the bird is set out. It's set out to relieve its hunger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided provision so that that bird came back to the nest with a full belly. Check out the Muslim, he mentioned what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say al mutawakkilin. That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, had, he was the one who had the most trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
وقد دخل مكة عام الفتح وعلى رأسه المقفر and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the conquest of Mecca when he entered into Mecca because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was outcast from Mecca and had to go to Medina his own people turned him out of Mecca and he had to go to Medina but when he, when he returned back to Mecca at the conquest of Mecca and when he returned back to Mecca he had a helmet on his head And the person who's sharp and intelligent understands why the Sheikh is mentioned in this particular moment right here. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had a helmet on his head, even though he had trust, he had the one that had the most trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that didn't stop him from carrying out the means and putting a helmet on his head. وقد أرشد وقد أرشد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى جمع بين الأخف بالأسباب والاعتماد على الله جل وعلا. And the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he taught us he taught us to carry out the means and to have trust in Allah سبحانه وتعالى. بقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم in another hadith where the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said احرص على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, be diligent about that which is going to benefit you. Be diligent. You want to exert a whole bunch of energy, and this is important. It's important. If you want to be diligent, and you want to exert tons of energy, and a lot of energy, exert that energy into something that's going to be beneficial for you. Sometimes we get caught up exerting energy into stuff that's not, that's not beneficial for us. It's not going to benefit us in this life, nor in the hereafter, but we're so busy exerting energy doing it. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he clarified, he said, and he said, Ihras ala ma yanfa'uka. Be diligent about that which is going to benefit you. As husbands, as husbands, we want to be we want to be diligent in learning a religion. That's what's going to benefit us. Diligent in earning a living. That's what's going to benefit us. Diligent in spending time with our families. That's what's going to benefit us. If you have time on your hands, you have time on your hands, do that which is going to be beneficial. Likewise, for our sisters, you benefit, you be diligent about that which is going to benefit you. Learn your religion. Be diligent about that. Have a, have a lot of enthusiasm. Go hard learning your religion. Likewise, cultivating the children. A person, a, a woman wants to be diligent about something and go hard about something, let it be about her children. Let it be about her children. You have some extra energy, spend it with your children. You have some extra time, spend it with your children. Don't be from the type of women that want to, that want to not have their children. At, at They can't wait to get a free time away from their children. To go exert that energy where? And everybody needs a break. We try to... We try to stay balanced. Everybody needs a break. But we're talking about a person that goes to the extreme that they just can't wait to drop their kids off at any given moment. Right? Not because they're sick. Not because they, they're down. Not because they really need to drop their kids off. But because they want to take that and Alhamdulillah, they're well rested. They really have some energy that day. And they want to go exert that energy somewhere else. Exert that energy with your kids. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ihras ala man yanfa'uka. Be diligent about that which is going to that, that which is going to benefit you. Likewise, for, for the women, be diligent in your home. You have some extra energy, clean up a little more. Make something special. Food-wise, I'm talking about. Do something special for the family. Set up an activity for the family. Do set up something nice for the family to do in the evening. I'm talking. I'm talking about them times when you had that extra energy to do something. Don't don't take that energy and run out the front door. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he taught us to combine between. Carrying out the means and relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where he said, be diligent about those things that are going to benefit you. Meaning, carry out the means. Wasta'in billah. Wasta'in billah and seek the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be diligent, do the means. And even when you do those means, still seek the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't rely on yourself. 
wa hadith Umar Sheikh Abdul Masih he mentioned wa hadith Umar radiyallahu anha radiyallahu anhu hadha fiha al-jam bayna al-akhti bil asbab wa tawakkal 'ala Allah and as we previously mentioned Sheikh Abdul Masih he mentioned that this particular hadith it combines between the two when we look at that when we look at the bird the bird took the means and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for the bird And there's more that can be said about this particular hadith. We'll mention one more point about this particular hadith and then move to the next hadith. In order not to make the sitting too long. But what we want to take from this particular hadith, or we'll mention this ayah first. Call Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجَعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran, and whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he'll make for him a way out. Whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he'll make for him a way out, out of any type of hardship that he has. But the condition that that person fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Asadi Rahimahullah, he mentions a, a beautiful point about this particular verse. That whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he'll make a way out for him. Right? But the opposite is understood as well. That whoever doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they find their life in chaos and shambles. If a person doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expect to find your life in chaos and in shambles. And the reason for that is because you're not fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is the opposite of what's understood from this particular verse. The person who fears Allah, then he'll have ways out that, that ways out that he couldn't imagine. But the opposite is the person who doesn't fear Allah, then they'll find their life, they'll find their life in, in, in shambles. The person who fears Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala will find provisions from places that they could not imagine. And this is this goes back to what I was mentioning about a, a happy family life. Two spouses benefiting from their marriage. You find a husband, right? You find a husband that, that he works. Alhamdulillah, he works. He tries. The sister, she, she's at home. She tries. But right now, so more specifically, I'm talking about the sisters, how they should look at their husbands. You have a husband. And inshallah ta'ala that that husband he's working, he's trying, he's exerting an effort. But sometimes he falls short. The bills may be short or whatever the case may be. The bills may be behind. But you see that he's trying. And you see that he fears, you see that he prays, he fasts, he fears Allah, he's going to work. He's exerting the energy. But it just so happened that things are to be our things are a little tight. What happens now? Does the household go upside down and you start kicking the wise down and you start browbeating him and, 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 you know, tearing him down or whatever the case may be? Look at that. We're not talking about the deadbeat. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about the person that, that doesn't fear a law, that doesn't handle his responsibility. We're not talking about that person. We're talking about the person that actually tries. So now, as a wife, what do you do? Do you turn around? And you give him grief, even though he's trying. A woman, a woman shouldn't do that. But what a woman should do, as we mentioned before, is that she should have some trust in Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala and she should be stress-free. She should be stress-free and she should not be worried. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this particular verse that whoever fears Allah, this man is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This man is doing what that bird did in this particular hadith. He's doing that. He set out early in the morning to try to fulfill his needs. He's done that. He he's taken the means. He's fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the result of that? Well, yarzukuhu min haythu la yahtasim. And they'll be provided from, from ways that they could not imagine. Everything is going to be okay in the house. Everything is going to be cool. 
The bills are going to get paid. Not, not, nothing's going to change. The kids are going to be okay. Everyone's going to be all right because we're relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's go ahead and finish this day stress-free and enjoy ourselves. But that all goes back to people or spouses having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not being so wrapped up in the dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he finished the verse and he mentioned, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكِّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ And whoever relies on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever relies on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they'll find that Allah is sufficient for them. Whoever relies on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah is enough for them. Allah is going to make a way out for them. What kind of, if, if you got, if you have two spouses that are on that type time, you have two spouses like that, that have that type of akhidah and that type of creed and better than them, we, we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What kind of, the stress level in the house is going to go way down. Way down. We're not worried about anything. Allah is going to take care of it. We fear in Allah, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're carrying out the means. We're okay. But on the opposite side, if you have people that are connected to the dunya, then the dunya the is going to stress you out. Period. You're always worried about the dunya, it's going to stress you out. The second aspect that we wanted to discuss in order to try to create a happy household is found in another hadith. It's found in a hadith on Abdullah ibn Busrin Kala Atta Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajul that a man came to the Messenger of Allah, or a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Faqah, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, O Messenger of Allah. He said, O Messenger of Allah, Inna Shara'i al-Islam kat kathurat alayna. He said that indeed the voluntary acts in Islam are many. He said that the voluntary acts in Islam are many. There are so many voluntary acts that we can do. So tell me about something that is extremely comprehensive, that gathers all of those things. There's so many, that's how, that's how Islam is, and that's, that's a good thing. There are so many voluntary deeds that a person could do in order to attain good. But this particular companion said, tell me about one thing that's, that's, that's comprehensive, that, that, that gathers all of these things that I can do. Call us. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا يزال لسانك رطبا من ذكر الله عز وجل. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the comprehensive thing that you can do. Keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as it relates to the topic that we're talking to, that's how our household should be. Our, our household should be moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's that going to do for our household? It's going to, it's going to create a beautiful environment in the household. Coupled with everyone trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and along and many other things that can be added, but we're just, just discussing two affairs right now. Shaykh Abdul Muslim, he discusses this particular hadith and he mentions Su'ala had a rajul Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ithanu min al amtila til kathira fi su'al ashab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an amur al deen. He mentioned this particular hadith is one of many examples of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming to ask him about some affairs of the religion. And anybody who's busy with hadith, we always see when we read hadith, whether it be in 40 hadith or whether it be in Baluga Maram, we always see in these books that the companions, they came to ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam questions. وَكُلُّ ذَلِكَ دَعَلُوا عَلَى فَضْلِهِمْ وَنُبْلِهِمْ وَسَبْقِهِمْ إِلَى كُلِّ خَيْرٍ and all of these things they show or they prove that the, the virtue of the companions and they prove the intelligence of the companions and they prove that they were at the forefront in seeking out all that is good. وَقَدْ أَرَادَ هَذَا الصَّحَابِ مَعْرِفَةَ تَرِيقٍ مِنْ تُرُقُ الْخَيْرِ يَخُصُّهَا بِمَزِيدَةِ اعْتِنَاءِ 
In this particular companion, he came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he wanted to know something that he should give extreme importance to or that, or that, or that he should give an increase in importance to. So that he can attain the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was speaking about voluntary, as we mentioned previously, this is about voluntary deeds. Sheikh Abdul Musa, he mentioned, as it, as it relates to the obligatory deeds, and all of them have to be done. Then all of them have to be done. As, as for the voluntary deeds, and some can be done, and some are is permissible to leave some off. But as it relates to the obligatory deeds, and all of them have to be done. So this particular companion, he was looking for something that was voluntary that he could do and give extra importance to it. وَقَدْ أَجَابَهُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِالْمُدَاوَمَةِ عَلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ And the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he guided him or answered him to, to, to be continuous and consistent in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَلَّا يَزَالَ لِسَانَهُ رَتْبًا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ That his, his tongue should be moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as it relates to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's two types. It's two types. A remembrance that's that's general. A remembrance that's general. Which is meant by which is meant by that is the prayer. So no doubt our houses, inshallah ta'ala, our houses should be should be places where the prayer is established. Not other men go to the masjid, but the, the women, they should pray in the house. And likewise, the men, they should sometimes pray voluntary prayers in the house. But the house, the house should be a place where prayer is established. Quran, And likewise, reading the Quran in the home. Likewise, seeking knowledge. And likewise, teaching knowledge. Whether it be the husband teaching the wife or the wife teaching the children. That's how the household, that's how the household should be. If we want to benefit from our marriages and have blissful and, and, and fruitful marriages. And likewise, there's a specific type of remembrance. Such as a tasbih, such as saying subhanallah, and likewise tahlil, saying la ilaha illallah, wa takbira, saying Allahu Akbar, wa tamheed, saying alhamdulillah. Know that our houses should be full of those, those, those statements and those phrases. If we want to have a, if we want to have beautiful marriages and benefit from our marriages, because likewise, like we said, the, the topic is to benefit the, how marriage benefits the community. But we want to benefit in our houses first and foremost. If these are what first and first and foremost. These are ways that we can do that. Having a house that's full of the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. She got almost and he mentions an important point. He mentions And this is something that's easy upon a person. Saying Alhamdulillah, saying La ilaha illallah, saying Subhanallah. There's something that's easy on a person. Instead of using our tongue for things that may not be beneficial, then we can use our tongues in the house to, to, to say these type things. Sheikh Abdul Musa, he mentions. وَثَابَتَ فِي صَحِيحَيْنِ It's been established in the two authentic books, meaning Al-Bukhari and Muslim. وَهُوَ آخِرَ الْحَدِيثِ فِي صَحِيحِ بُخَارِ And it's the last hadith in Sahih Bukhari. قَوْلُهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Messenger of Allah صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ said كَلِمَتَان حَبِيبَتَان إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ There are two phrases, there are two sentences that are Beloved to Ar Rahman. There are two sentences that are beloved to Ar Rahman, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khafifatani ala lisan. And they are light upon the tongue. They're light upon the tongue. Thaqilatani ala mizan. However, they're heavy on the scale. Light on the tongue, but heavy on the scale. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. When a person says, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi wa subhanallah al azim. A person says, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi wa subhanallah al azim. Those two statements are light on the tongue and heavy on the scales. Something that we should constantly mention in our houses, insha'Allah ta'ala. So in summary, 
just want to encourage my brothers and encourage my sisters from this day forward to try to implement these two things in our households. Advice goes to myself first and foremost, as always. Any advice that I say out of my mouth, it goes to me first and foremost. And then to all, whoever hears it. We want to try to remind our, our, my brothers and sisters from this day forward to increase in the trust and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be too attached to the dunya. Don't be too attached to people. Don't be too attached to material things. But let's learn in our households, as spouses, as husbands and wives, to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, from this moment forward, inshallah ta'ala, to try to increase in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our household. To try to read more Quran. To try to study more. To try to do more voluntary prayers. To try to teach one another more in the house. And inshallah ta'ala, we too do both of these things, inshallah ta'ala, coupled with other things that the, the religion of Islam encourages us to do. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll find ourselves increasing and in reaping the fruits of marriage and increasing and in enjoying its bliss. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. right there. He, he took it out to put the tape.